Aldini, Leo Fender, Colonel Sanders, and Henry Ford. Yeah, there's a lot of people we remember, but not what we remember them for. Of course, we'd like to thank Jim and Jack and that guy who invented beer. Yeah, sometimes all it takes is a good idea. Oh, when it comes to you, baby, I got a few real good ideas of my own. Like, baby, put a ring on your finger, hold you real close in a real slow dance. I want to kiss your mouth and let it linger. Live a little, baby, let's take a chance. Spend the rest of my life with you right here. Yeah, sometimes all it takes is a good idea. Pizza, poker, and pool All the things that we enjoy Now I don't profess to be a scientist No, I don't think that clear But sometimes all it takes is a good idea Oh, when it comes to you, baby I got a few real good ideas of my own Welcome back to Cool Country 2KA. That's McAllister Kemp. A good idea. And it wasn't just a good idea that they went to Nashville. It was a great idea. And I've got Troy ready to talk to. Hey, Troy. How are you, mate? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well. Welcome back. Thank you. Tell me about the trip. Yeah, the ball, though. It was just three weeks of, you know, partying hard and, and, <laughs> and, uh, Lots we drank lots of beer and ate lots of chicken wings and I probably came back a bit heavier than when I left. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, but no, we had a really cool time. I mean, you know, you you hang out with the most incredible people and, you know, we've been really lucky that, you know, the big and rich thing, you know, this has become a really a really cool thing for us. So, you know, besides you know, besides meeting those guys and hanging out with Chris Young and Love and Theft and, and Florida Georgia line and a few of the bands we were hanging with and you know, writing songs with amazing songwriters, and you know, it was just—it's just an amazing time. You know, it's one of those places you just get off, the, like, you get off the plane, and you feel like you're home. You know, when you're a country music singer. Yep. I just think it's so. Uh, I, was, I was really depressed to come home. You know, but you've got to come back to reality, and uh, I guess get back to life for a little while. And we, we're going back in July with a, with a stack of great songs and, and a great producer to record. With so I'm pumped about going back. Oh, that's awesome. We uh, we were taken to a little pub one night called Santa's Pub. You know, and it's just it's. 
these old trailers, you know, that, uh, it's called a triple wide tra- triple wide trailer, and um, they've turned it into this place called Santa's Pub, and the guy who owns it just looks like Santa Claus, you know, he's got this big long white beard, and um, and it's just a karaoke bar with a pool table, and he's pretty much set it up for the for the younger sort of university students in town, and the young musicians and the singers, and they can just come there and sing and sort of. You know, show off a little bit if they're, you know, they're tipping themselves as being the next big star. They can come in and do karaoke in front of people. And you never know who might be sitting in the crowd at Santa's Bar to listen, you know what I'm saying? But in saying so, you know, it's just a really cool place. He puts on $2 beers, so he really looks after the the young kids of town. And it's a real sort of underground sort of hidden place in the ghettos of Nashville that no one can really find. But uh, yeah, a lot of the big guys from Nashville, all the big bands, Jason Aldean goes there and all these people. There's an area in, in the middle of Nashville called Midtown, you know, so uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of bars and some cool little, you know, venues around there and little restaurants, uh, and there's a place there called the Tin Roof, and, you know, that's the sort of place where you just, you rock up, and the night we went there, Chris Young was there, he was out the front, you know, and he remembered us from CMC Rockstar Hunter, so, you know, come and sit down, boys, for the next thing we're going to have a beer with Chris and just catching up on life, and just those types of connections that you are making, you swap emails and phone numbers and stuff, they're kind of invaluable as, as you move forward in your career. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that is just so very cool that, you know, you've gone to this little place called Santa's Pub and I did watch the um, the MK Diaries. They they were quite entertaining, especially the, the buffalo wings. I don't know what the go is yeah. there with them, but um, it's quite amazing that this, this little Santa's Pub and you get all these big name artists going to this little trailer and that's, that's, that's crazy, isn't it? It is crazy. I mean, it's, it's sort of, you know, Santa, Santa's only been there for two years. He used to be there as a patron. He'd just go there and just sort of have a drink himself and do some singing. But he said, I guess two years ago, he decided to buy the place dirt cheap. The place is packed every night of the week. The cool thing about Nash, every night of the week in every bar you go to, it's like it's like the Tenworth Country Music Festival, 365 days a year, you know what I mean? That's very um, cool. That's what Nashville's like. I mean, you just you go down Broadway any night and you'll see the most incredible bands in every little honky-tonk bar that could all be superstars, you know, and they're, they're people that no one even knows and they're just playing for tips with a, little, with a little bucket out the front, you know, or they have some girl run around and say, can you give us a tip for the band, you know, and you, you throw your five bucks in and you feel rude because you should be, you should be on a stadium stage, you know. <laughs> so, so did yeah, you guys uh, play there, Troy? Did you- yeah, we did. I mean, I jumped up on a few stages at nights out, you know, Drew did as well, and I mean, the cool part, you know, we, with the first week hanging out with John Rich, I mean, we did this charity event with him on the, the first Sunday that we were there. We played for the uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, that, um, the cancer sort of hospital for the kids over there in Nashville, and they raise millions of dollars of every year, you know, for these sick kids. And kids from all around the world go to St. Jude's for, for cancer treatment. You know, there's kids from Australia there. And this place uh, needs like $150 million a day to run. Wow. So they, they really rely on... Big charity events and and donations from the from the, of the public ongoing just about every day of, the, of you know of its existence to you know to look after these kids and John Rich is just an amazing guy when it comes to sort of raising money for these types of charities and so we played at the uh, charity event at his house and you know his house is just amazing it's like a five story house I saw it, it. Like, it was incredible yeah, I mean it looks like a big toaster you know but um. <laughs> Just, you know, on the roof, there's grass and a pool, and I think they shot the video for Country Done Come to Town on the top of that roof, you know, and they had Sebastian Bach there from Skid Row and Ted Nugent and a whole other Goodness. bunch of big stars, you know. But just to stand on that roof and think, wow, that's where they shot this video with all those people. And, and uh, where we played in his house on Level 3, I mean, he's got a bar set up, you know, with a, with a stage and a massive area for people to sit and a, and a level up top like a mezzanine where they, people can look down on the stage as well. I mean, you, you're in a house and you feel like you're in some midtown cool bar, you know, and it's actually John Richard's house. Just a bizarre thing that it was just us two there. But there was, there was also a lot of radio people there and, and um, unfortunately it wasn't it wasn't sort of full of, um, you know, record company people and stuff like that. I mean, you'd have to go back to Nashville and have your own showcase gig to make that sort of thing happen. But just to be in that environment, you know, everyone that was at the show at John's house loved it. I mean, and when it was all said and done, you know, you asked whether we played any gigs there. I mean, John's, John's standing behind the bar and he goes, guys, everyone shush, you know, we're like, What's he going to say? Because every time John speaks, it's pretty special, you know. And he goes, <laughs> "I just had a great idea. Why don't we get out the '66 Cadillac in my garage?" And he said, "We'll all get in." And, we'll, and he said, "We'll take McAllister Kemp down to the honky tonk bars on Broadway, and we'll walk into every bar for ten minutes. And you guys have got to get up on stage and play two songs, and then we're going to go to the next bar, and you can play two more songs, and the next bar, and you can play two more songs." In his Cadillac with his security guard named Six. 
when we drive down broad we drive down you know west end avenue into broadway in the back of john rich's cadillac with a few of his band members and a radio guy named rob from uh, detroit you know and you know it was just the most incredible thing and john sit on the back and everyone's just freaking out as we're driving past him in their cars just on the road you know and then we get downtown and we walk into all these little honky tonks with john rich and the place just erupts you know there's bands on stage John Rich says, drinks on me, everybody. So he's paying for everyone's drinks. He goes up to the band and he says, can you guys let these, these two guys, my buddies from Australia, up on stage? So he, he introduces us on stage and we get up and we play with these bands. Like the lead singer steps off the stage and gives it his guitar. Next thing, Drew and I are playing all kinds of tough and country uh-huh. proud up there. And the band, the band that's on the stage starts playing along with us like they've known the song their whole life. Oh, wow. You know? That's, so, that's awesome. Yeah, so, you know, so two hours later we get back in the Cadillac and go back to John's house just, and I'm just thinking, Drew and I just look at each other going, what just happened, you know? Like it was, it was one of those, a day you'll never forget, you know, just like that was the coolest thing, you know, and I think for John it was such a buzz for him to take us downtown and sort of feel like he introduced McAllister to camp to Broadway and those honky tonks. That but, is absolutely amazing. Now tell me, you obviously spent a lot of time with John Rich. Did you get to spend as much time with Big Kenny? What's he like? Oh, he's a loose goose, man. He's like Mr. You know, Peace, Love and Mung Beans. He's, um, <laughs> he's, all, he's all smiles and hugs and, and uh, he's a really cool guy. I mean, he wasn't around as much as John because it was at John Tower. He came in for the charity event um, and there was another event on the Thursday night that we went back and played at again, just another sort of big uh, gala night he was having at his house. But Big, big Kenny uh, had jumped on a plane to Italy with his family by then to go and have a holiday. And so he wasn't, he wasn't around as much. And there was a plan to write a song with Big Kenny on the, on the Friday that he got back, but um, things got busy for, for for ourselves as well as him. I don't even know if he got back, but uh, it didn't it didn't eventuate. But I mean, you know, we've got friendships there with those guys that will be ongoing. You know, we've got a good foundation for you know moving forward with Big and Rich, and I really think that um you know some great stuff will happen with with those guys and us down the track. There's, there's talk of those guys coming out next year and doing a an arena tour which, you know, hopefully we'll get to be the opening act for, you know. So little things like that are going to be great as we move forward. We wrote with about, you know, 10 songwriters from Nashville, you know, and, and down in Nashville, right in the middle of town, but in the midtown area, a two big streets, 16th and 17th Avenue. That's what they call Music Row, and that's where all the publishing places are and all the record companies and all the songwriting rooms. So you'll ring up, say, EMI Publishing, and they'll, they'll hook you up with one or two of their songwriters over, in, you know, in the 10 days that you're there and you, and you ring a few other publishing places and suddenly you're sort of put together with these songwriters who have written songs for Montgomery Gentry or Big and Rich or Luke Bryan or Jason Aldean or mm. Carrie Underwood and suddenly you're sitting in a room for four hours with these guys hoping that you're going to write a, a hit song in the four hours that you're in there, you know. So <laughs> inevitably we, we, uh, we wrote 10 sessions, you know, uh, Monday to Friday for two weeks. So we had 10 sessions and we came out with about 15 songs in the end. We really want to make an album this time around that can, you know, that's going to Australia and, and sort of keep building our, our, you know, hopefully a fan base here, but also and maybe have a chance, of, you know, connecting in America, you know. So we're really wary of what type of songs we, we, we put on our album this time, and um, you know, really looking at what's happening in the American market and what type of song is, is sort of working in the American market. Where um, it's a little bit confusing actually because, uh, you know, you look at songs like, you know, "Cruise" by Florida Georgia Line or. Yep. Country Girl by Luke Bryan and some of these songs, they're just more sort of fun, good time type of songs. They're not too heavy lyrically, you know. We've, we've sort of built a bit of a, uh, a reputation on writing songs, you know, core themes, family, hard work, blue collar type of stuff. So sure. for us to sort of to, to do sort of those sort of feel good, sort of more fun, lighthearted sort of songs is a bit of a different direction to go. So we're really wary about how do we do both, you know, so that everyone stays happy. How do we keep the Australian fans happy with, with where we're going as well as sort of try and break it with a couple of songs in the States just to put our, put our name on the board over there. So we've got, we've got a lot of decisions to make right now. And whilst we're there, we also had a lot of the publishing companies pitches songs, you know, just songs that were written by other guys. Oh, yeah, and they of course. Said, Maybe you guys might want to record this. So inevitably we ended up with 68 songs. We have to get down to 10. Oh. Yeah, so we sat in a room with our producer on the Saturday before we left and we, we managed to get it down to like 25 and that was just like pulling teeth. It was horrible, you know, because we we just booted some amazing songs, you know. <laughs> Locally, and now we're sort of down to 25, trying to, you know, still trying to decide which, which 15 more we get to boot out before we've got, we're happy with the final 10. So it's a really hard thing to do. And, I mean, it's nice to be in that position that you've got too many songs to choose from. Can't you um, keep some more, like, for a second album? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, 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 I guess that's a cool part. I mean, they'll, they'll stay in a file somewhere and... You know, the next three or four albums might be taken care of as well. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah, it's just an amazing time, you know. So, I mean, aside from the fact that 
you know, we came home with a, a, like a massive amount of songs. Um, you know, we, our producer is a guy named Jeremy Stover, and Jeremy Stover's recorded, you know, Jack Ingram and, and Justin Moore. He's having some big hits. He's had a few big number ones over the last few years and some big acts, and he does an amazing job with production. So we're really excited to work with him back there in July. He'll put an amazing band around the project so that these guys will be able to, you know, they'll cut all the music for the, for the album in two days. They'll do five songs in one day and five the next. And then we spend pretty much 18 days just doing vocals and just and overdubs, getting little guitar solos and stuff that are laid over the top, you know, to finish off the album. And, and uh, that's exciting. But, you know, with the, with the songs we came home with and, and, and having Jeremy there at the helm now and, and, and the friends that we've made over there and, and sort of some of the big stars that we've sort of been able to sort of uh, hang out with due to, due to things like CMC Rocks the Honey, you know, I mean, those types of festivals that happen here open those types of doors that you can go to Nashville and, and have that and, and keep those friendships alive which is really cool and you know and hopefully we might even be able to drag a few of those guys in to do a duet with us on the record when we go back there you know so that's fair you never know cool. never know what's going to happen as, as we go forward but right now we've sort of just got to concentrate on the next sort of six weeks we've got a we've got a gig on the 22nd of, of June I think at the Musselbrook RSL club then we shoot back to Nashville and come back at the end of July, and we've actually got a gig locally at the uh, the brewery at the Queens Wharf Brewery back at Newcastle again on the 28th of July down in the car park. They're going to do it bigger this time. Oh, cool! And then you've got things like the cruise and country coming up, and the Gimpy Master and Mount Isa, and there's all these other things coming up as well. But they'll all be on the McAllisterCamp.com. So cool! I don't know if you know either, Troy, um, but they've just announced that the CMC North Queensland will will host Alan Jackson this year as the headliner. Yeah. So I'm wondering whether you guys um, will get put on the bill for that, having already supported him before, perhaps. Oh, yeah, I'm hoping we do. I mean, we're a late, we're a late addition to the CMC Rocks the Hunter. Let's pray um, that someone so... gets sick, eh? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It seems to be the way it rolls with us. But... Hey, listen, I've got to ask you. Listening to you talk about Nashville, have you been before? I've been over. Yeah, I've been over like three or four times. As has Drew. I mean, we we both went over a solo artist years ago to write songs and just sort of get a feel for what Nashville is all about. And then we've sort of been back now a couple of times together. And uh, the funny part about Nashville, when you are a country artist, is I mean, you step off the plane in Nashville and you feel like you're home. You know what I mean? It's a warm, fuzzy feeling that just feels good. I mean, it's a just there's something in the air in that town. And, and I'm not, I don't want to. To, to sort of sound un-Australian or not yeah. patriotic, yeah. but there's something really cool about Nashville when you're a, when you're a musician, and it, yeah, it's a beautiful town. I mean, everybody's really friendly. There's a real southern sort of culture there, and, and you don't see you know fights in bars. You, everyone seems to to get along. There's there's real support for country music and any style of music that happens in Nashville. I mean, it's a beautiful town. I mean, it, it's green, it's lush, it's it's, it's old and new combined, and um, as far as building and architecture. But it's yeah, it's very it's very welcoming and good fun, and definitely some a place that I think everyone that's a country music fan should go one day just to check out if they haven't done so already. Oh, that's cool. Tell me about and the chicken wings. The chicken wings are just you know something <laughs> that you and I just can't get enough of. You know, they're the <laughs> buffalo wings with the most incredible flavors and 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 sauces and stuff you can get for them, and <laughs> and they're cheap. You know, they're like fifty cents a wing. So for you know for I don't know what ten bucks you get twenty wings and <laughs> and the beers come out for like two bucks and they're the size of a house, you know. So, oh, that's awesome! <laughs> you know, and I don't usually drink beer, you know. I don't. I'd rather a JD any day, you yeah, know. Sure. But um, at two bucks a pop, you just go, "Yeah, I'm going to be drinking beer on this trip." So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it was good fun, and, and um, I, I think you know we we used this trip a bit more. It was a bit more of a party trip this time, obviously, because we were just we were songwriting, we we're hanging out, we were, jo- we were we're hanging out with Big and Rich, and we're just having a great time and we just really so immersed ourselves in the atmosphere of Nashville. But I think next time we go back, it'll be a bit more low key. Obviously we're going to be singing for two or three weeks there. So I need good sleep when I'm about to sing all day the next day. You know, I can't be out till, you know, midnight or, you know, two or three in the morning and expect to sing at nine o'clock the next day, you know, on, on my album. So I think next time around it's going to be a lot more low key and, 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 and down to business. So, uh, Really looking forward to it, though. We head off on the 28th of June, and we, we get back around the 24th of July. So, uh, yeah, we also met with a, with a big agent over there named Bobby Roberts, who really likes the band, and we've talked about going back next year during the American summer to do, like, three months of touring through the state. Sweet. You know, the state fairs and county fairs and maybe even get out on the road with a couple of big acts as their opening, as their opening spot. So that's kind of exciting as well. That's really exciting. Like I said, it's just a, it's a funny town. You just sort of where the people that you run into. I mean, the nice part about it too, in talking to people that live around there and even people in the industry, you know, you'll 
you'll have Keith Urban or Tim McGraw or any of these artists, you know, just standing in the line at Starbucks for a coffee, you know, but they don't get hassled by everybody, you know, like they'll have, there'll be 20 people in line, but no one's jumping on Tim McGraw's back to say, can you sign an autograph? Is that right? It's just, it's, there's just a respect in Nashville that the fans give the artists. I think it's really cool. It's just like they just treat them like normal people. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. so cool. I, um, I'm so pleased that you guys went over there and uh, obviously things went extremely well for you. You might have seen the video there. Of we, we played, we're I doing did. a sound check with John's house and he's doing the horns, you know. Yep. Yep. That, I mean, that sort of endorsement from John Rich is like, you're just sitting there, I'm watching the video going, is this happening? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, you mean the, 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 the funny part is, you know, he, he, he's, he's a self-confessed fan of us. Like, he, he said that, and it's like, man, that's just bizarre for me because it's the other way around as far as I'm concerned, you know. So, yeah, so it's uh, it's it's just been, it was an amazing time. And uh, another cool thing when we go back to is that we're actually – on the, on the 18th of July, we're going to do a showcase over there. So we're pulling together a band and we're going to do like a half an hour set for, for agents and, and record industry guys and record companies. And there's a big uh, company over there called Arista Media uh, run by a guy named Jeff Walker, who's an Australian guy that's been living there for about 30 years now. And he pretty much heads his company. So with his help and a few other people like Bobby Roberts and other people, we're going to put this, this uh, showcase gig on at a place called Third and Lindsley, which is a really nice bar. Okay. Um, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll put on a good show and impress the right people, and who knows what would come out of that, you know. So uh, that's another exciting thing that's going to happen in July for us over there. Yeah, it's all happening, and, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it's all happening. You know, it's it's kind of a such a fun job and and such a fun career, and you know, we don't take it for granted, and, and we never really have, you know. So right now, we just got to concentrate on putting together the best album for our existing sort of fan bases, you know, as big as it is, and hopefully we can just keep growing that. But you know, like I said, try and start to make some inroads into the Nashville culture as well and see if we can have a career over there, you know, and, uh, and sort of then be able to go back and forth between the two countries and, you know, do our summer in Australia and play some festivals and then go over there and do summers in, in America and, you know, just chase the sun. That's cool. I noticed on uh, your Facebook page you have a lot of new fans now. So obviously when you did get up and play, even those two songs at each pub or whatever, you guys are very well received by the fans, so it looks. Yeah, it was amazing, Kylie. Like, we were just... Um, blown away, and that's just the, the country music fans um, in Nashville are just, uh, I don't know, so so into everything. I mean, I think they just, I think for a start, you just step on stage with a guitar and they love you before you even make a noise, you know what I mean? It's kind of weird to a point. I mean, there's just so much support for anyone who's having a go. Correct. When you go back over to Nashville again in July, will you be making music videos over there or do you make them back here? It's actually something we discussed when we were over there last because it's, you know, you've got obviously some great backdrops there being the city of Nashville to be able to do video clips if you wanted. So uh, I guess if there was a single worked out, because the plan is to sort of obviously do this album in July, drop a single sort of uh, October or September, September, October this year, like the first single from the album, then release the album at Tamworth next year. So it'd be really cool if that first single was decided and we were able to do a video clip while we are over there. Yeah, and possibly even, and, and also we're talking about doing uh, I guess just a photo shoot for the next album over there while we're there as well because, again, you just get some really cool backdrops um, around Nashville. Get here, you know, we try and get away from the old um, weatherboard house or... <laughs> well, maybe you can you have know, a backdrop um, of Mount Richmore. <laughs> something like that, yeah. <laughs> you something don't see like that, that in Australia. <laughs> no, I know. No, it's, it's definitely cool. I mean, there's some amazing bridges around Nashville. There's some amazing buildings and stuff like that, so... We'll try and find something that's cool, you know, that, that hasn't been done to death because you've always got to be wary of that as well and, um, and try and get some great shots for, for, uh, for the next album. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a really exciting time and, and I, uh, I pinch myself every day that I'm a part of this duo and uh, get to live this life. It's really good. It's really paying off in, in a, and it lets me have a life that, you know, is fun and enjoyable and at the end of the day, first thing, first and foremost for me is if it wasn't fun, I wouldn't do it, you know? Yep. All right. I better let you get going and um, yeah, cool. it's always good to talk to you. <laughs> Too easy, sweetheart. We'll okay. catch up soon. Yeah, we will. Okay. Thanks, darling. Take care. Thanks, darling. Bye. Right, bye. There he goes, Troy Camp from McAllister Camp. And as we've just heard, they have had a spectacular time in Nashville and heading back there next month again to actually record a new album. So congratulations, guys. You uh, definitely are on a winner. And, uh, yeah, we wish them all the best.